Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I would like to invite you to a wellness session which spans over about 10,000 years of history of glaciers in the Alps. And to do so, some of you are a little bit more happy than others. They get <laughs> the real experience of coolness and after the coolness is gone of warming up again. For my presentation, under the heading of fluid, I had to freeze some of the fluid, at least temporarily, and make out of rain glaciers. That's one of the Alpine valleys we go now. I invite you to come up here. On the right, the right picture shows you a photograph taken in the year 2005. And the left picture is a painting of the same valley. And you really, you see, it is about 8,400 years ago. So in between the two views of the same valley, something happened. We call it climate change. Now, how do we know that a painter, obviously he was not painting 8,400 years ago, but quite recently, and he is still alive, so he knows what he has been doing. I must show you that this is not just an idea, but is based on some realities. The reality is shown on this photograph, and you see the glacier in, uh, behind, it's the opening of the glacier uh, meltwater stream, and in front here, where it says beautiful sample, this is a tree log, a huge tree log. And this has been driven out of the glacier from underneath by the meltwater stream. So this is the reasoning why we think the va high valley up there was looking quite different. The 8,400 years ago is by dating, I will talk about later on. Now, one of my main points is very simple. The climate always went in both directions through the entire history of the Earth. It went to cool, it went to warm, back and forth. This can be illustrated like this. We are cooling down with this picture in front of an alpine glacier. We can crawl underneath it, we feel the cold. Can you feel it? It's nice and cold. We go outside in the alpine meadows and we are in the flowers. The same place where now the ice is and we go back underneath the ice again and back out into the flowers. And this is a process which happened many times, at least 10 times over the past 10,000 years, from cold to warm, from ice cream to non-ice cream. Now, there is a question behind, and as a scientist, I'm obliged to show you some diagrams. Otherwise, you don't believe me. So, on the left, in the left side, there is a diagram, this beautiful old famous diagram on the Camp Century ice record in Greenland. And it shows a red line. And this red line is quite uh, bumpy down here at the end of the last glaciation, and it goes warm and goes up here in a quite non-spectacular way. Now, does this non-spectacular way mean that alpine glaciers were extremely stable over the past 10,000 years for which this record stands? That's the main question. Now, that's one of the alpine glaciers. It's nice. It's in a, in a high alpine valley and it's bordered by what we called lateral moraine ridges. Moraine ridges, that's a geological product of the glacier advancing and of its activity interaction with the geological ground underneath. Next slide shows us over here the situation. So this very ridge is not a simple ridge. It does not reflect a simple advance, but it reflects a multi-advanced situation. Every one, every ridge here representing one glacier advance. So the whole story since the last glaciation, since the last ice age in the high Alps, is obviously more complex, more diverse. Now we go back to here, 
Now we see one of the tree logs just being melting out of the ice. It's marked right now here. So now we go back to the logs. What can we do with these logs? What do they tell us? Obviously, it's organic matter. We can date it by tree ring analysis, by dendrochronology. We can count every ring of the tree going back. And there is one spectacular event around 8,200 years ago. That's what is called the 8.2K event. Is it globally or not? Now, in red, we have the record of gr from Greenland. The CO2 in the, uh, the oxygen isotopes in the ice. And in black, we have the, o the oxygen isotopes from the tree rings from this very glacier, from the log you have just seen. And it goes parallel. And it goes down here extremely parallel. And this is one of the proofs that we are looking in the Alpine glaciers at a global signal. Same log, same place. You see every blue line or red line marks one tree. So that there was not only one tree, there were many, many trees from where there is ice now. And what we see is they were killed within three years. The last trees were killed within three years through a very event. So glacier advances were rapidly and occurred fast. We can do radiocarbon dating. Radiocarbon dating means measuring the content of radiogenic uh, carbon in an organic sample. There is something like the Dovrius effect. The Dovrius effect brings together our calendar chronology with the radiocarbon chronology. Because a radiocarbon age year is not a calendar year, we have to calibrate. The calibration curve is not a linear line, it's a step. It consists of steeper parts, flat parts, steeper part, flat parts. The flat parts are called plateaus. The flat parts mean the sun was strong. Very little radiogenic carbon in our organic system of the world. The steep part means the sun was weak. More radiogenic carbon reaches the bio, bio zone. All our samples from underneath the ice go with the plateaus. This is a wonderful sign to show the sun made it. The sun is in control of these systems. Now, this is a first kind of a summary. It shows you over the 10,000 years, maybe you can see it from the back, there are more blue areas and more yellowish areas. It shows the blue glacier advances. It shows the yellow warmer periods. So in summary, 55% of the time, since the over 10,000, last 10,000 years, the glaciers were smaller than now. Okay, the frozen fluid, it's kind of a hypothesis, over the ten, last 10,000 years reached 10 advanced retreat cycles. The Duffrius effect shows us the sun is behind the story. I'm calling this system, system of constant dynamics, but pronouncing dynamics. There are two questions remaining. Question one is, another diagram, here this is ZO2 globally. Here the behavior of an alpine glacier. You have a cross point. And important is to see the alpine glaciers receded way before the global CO2 was raising. This question has to be answered. We have to find out why. We don't know yet. Question number two goes in the same direction. Another nice diagram out of science on the Antarctic ice core records. We are looking at the red line here. It shows temperature. Going back one glacial cycle to 130,000 years, it was warmer than today. Then the Earth was going into the cold, slowly surfing, so to say, into the cold stage. And finally, about 20,000 years ago, it reached the very cold. Please think about why did the Earth not completely freeze? Why did it not go cold totally forever? But why did it jump around 
and get to our present interglacial to the warm period again. Why? These questions need to be answered before we can go on. When you finish your ice cream, don't throw away, or when you have another ice cream sometime in the future, don't throw away the wooden stick. Keep it. It is a document of climate change. With the Matterhorn, most cordial thanks for listening. <laughs>